continuing my video about the e-paper label. After successfully using the e-paper as a dynamic label, I will now create a casing to optimally place all the necessary components. Starting with the ESP32 as the controller, I mount it on a perforated PCB and attach spacers, which will then be secured inside the casing box using screws. On the back, I also attach a hook, making it easy to mount on a pipe joint rack with a 28mm pipe diameter. The next component is the RFID reader. I create a mount on the casing to position the RFID reader so that it isn't too far inside, making it easier to scan RFID tags. Next, I use a mini buzzer as an audio indicator when scanning a tag. The buzzer serves the function of providing an audible alert whenever a tag is successfully scanned, helping to confirm the action. I use a 12mm LED, which I will later utilize for the pick to light system. Next, the main component is the 4.26 inch e-paper from Waveshare. To mount the e-paper, I use spacers and secure it in the box by inserting the spacers into the prepared mounting holes, ensuring that its position remains stable and doesn't shift. To view related videos on this e-paper, please check out my previous videos. And here is the finished result of the e-paper label box, ready to be placed on the pipe joint rack as a dynamic label and also for the implementation of a smart supermarket. This is an example of installing the e-paper label box on a pipe joint rack. In this setup, there are several store columns, with an e-paper label placed at both the in and out positions of each column. Each box contains a Kanban with an RFID tag that will be scanned when supplying stock to the store, increasing the stock count. Similarly, when taking out items, the Kanban is scanned again at the e-paper label box, reducing the stock count. The data from these activities will provide real-time stock updates. This is the 3D printed result for the e-paper label box. I used ABS as the material. There are three main components, the box, the cover, and the hook for mounting on the pipe joint. And here is the e-paper wired together with the ESP32, RFID reader, buzzer, and LED. All components are connected, and I tested them first to ensure they function properly before installing them into the casing box. This step is important to verify that the wiring and communication between components work correctly, preventing any issues after assembly. This is the position of the components installed in the casing box. Make sure the ESP32, RFID reader, and buzzer are securely mounted using M3 screws. Ensure that no cables are loose or obstructing other components. Proper cable management is important to prevent interference and ensure a clean installation. Double check all connections to avoid potential issues when the system is powered on. And here it is after all components are installed and the cover is securely attached using screws. I used a hot glue gun to attach the LED to the cover, ensuring a firm hold. On the back, I installed a power jack connector to connect the device to an adapter. After connecting the e-paper to the adapter, it will blink and display the part name and part number that have been set for this store position, which is 101. The data is retrieved from the database. In this example, in the database, store number 101 is assigned to the part name regular cheeseburger. So, when the system is powered on, the e-paper will display the part data, including the quantity of the item available in the store. If the total quantity is zero, we can change the label by scanning a Kanban or an RFID tag assigned to the store. For example, we can update it to Double Patty Burger. Next, I will simulate the process. The RFID reader behind me represents the e-paper label positioned at the in location. When supplying items to the store, the water spider must scan the Kanban with the RFID tag. This will increase the quantity for that store number. The scanned Kanban will be placed back into the polybox, and the items will be supplied to the store. This is an example of the position during the supply process to the store. Next, when retrieving items from the store, the water spider must scan the Kanban in the polybox. In this example, if the wrong Kanban is scanned, the system will not process it. 
there will be a notification saying unknown RFID if the RFID tag is not registered in the system, or wrong Kanban if the scanned Kanban does not match the one recorded during the previous supply process. When the scanned Kanban matches the one from the store, the system will record the data into the database, reducing the total quantity for that store. In this example, the standard number of items per Kanban is 5 pieces. The LED on the e-paper box will be used as a pick to light system in the future. When the water spider scans a withdrawal Kanban at an RFID reader, the LED on the corresponding store number matching the part name and FIFO sequence will light up. This will serve as an indicator for the correct store position for the withdrawal Kanban. That concludes the summary of the e-paper label box, which I will use in the implementation of a smart supermarket. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.